All right. Well, hello, everybody, everyone, as they're logging in. Um, it's great to see you all. Um, welcome to the Catholic Impact Investing Collaborative's Community Forum on Growing Your Impact Investing Portfolio, Returns, Roadblocks, and Catholic Mission. Uh, my name is Maggie Stoller, and I am the Associate Director at the Catholic Impact Investing Collaborative, also known as SEEK. Um, we're, I'm really excited today to introduce you to Anne Shankin, who's here with us. She is SEEK's new director, who joined in January. Um, a little bit of background on Anne. Um, prior to joining SEEK, Anne served as the Director of Client Development and Sales at CME Group, the world's largest financial derivatives exchange, where she covered institutional clients and ESG for the BuySide Americas team. She holds a BA in History from the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and an MBA from the Kellogg Graduate School of Management at Northwestern University in Chicago. Uh, to kick off our webinar, I'm going to turn it over to Anne to lead us in an opening prayer. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Maggie. We are so excited to have so many participants. Thank you each for joining. So let's start with a brief moment of silence, a few seconds for us to place all that we carry in our hearts, burdens, and joys in the hands of God. Eternal and loving God, you brought us here together because we want to use our talents and all that you've entrusted to us as a force for good, to accelerate the time when everyone is treated with the dignity of being your sons and daughters, and our common home is treated as what it truly is, paradise on earth. Bless our efforts and what each one of us has in their hearts. Thank you for all you give us in your immense love. With the faith that moves mountains, united with the Pope and the Universal Church. We ask you for the miracle of peace in Ukraine and in all troubled places in the world, especially the most forgotten ones. And we ask you to guide us today in wisdom so that all we do may bear the fruits you intended. Amen. So here are a few housekeeping items. <laughs> so we prepare. We encourage you to use the chat box to introduce yourselves let us know where you're joining from and to interact with each other and with the speakers. Uh, if you have any questions or comments for our speakers, make sure to drop them in the Q&A area, the, the Q&A specifically, and we'll do our best to respond live or follow up after the webinar. Feel free to upvote any questions that you'd like to see answered by liking them. And a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and we will send you a link of the recording in the next day or so. And now I'm excited to introduce our webinar facilitator, Dan Nielsen, who also serves as the co-chair of the SEEK Advisory Board. Dan has been focused on sustainable impact and ESG investing since 2005, most recently as the head of product management ESG in the SEAS at Morningstar, head of ESG at Great Lakes Advisors. And prior to that, as the director of socially responsible investing at Christian Brothers Investment Services. He also serves on the Leadership Council of Loyola University of Chicago's Bonhart Center and teaches the ESG investing class that is part of the Bonhart uh, School Program. Then received his MBA from the University of Chicago and a BA in Chinese language and literature from the University of Maryland. So please join me in welcoming Dan. You're muted, Dan. There you go. That's still. There we go. Yes. So after two years of using Zoom on almost a daily basis, you'd think I'd get that down. So um, thank you, Anne, for that warm welcome. And uh, once again, on behalf of my, me um, and the entire advisory board of SEEK, welcome to everybody um, for this forum. Um, just so everybody knows, um, we try to organize, SEEK tries to organize these quarterly forums about once every three months. And the idea is, first and foremost, to share information with all of you that are interested in learning about impact investing. Um, this is, today's conversation is gonna be a little different. In the past, we've chosen specific topics that can be addressed through impact investing and had some speakers and practitioners and even um, uh, investees 
come and share their wisdom and experience with everybody. Um, this discussion today, I'm really excited about because it's talking about impact investing a little bit more broadly. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the process and the operations of it, um, hearing from three different practitioners who are at different places on their journey of um, engaging in impact investing. So they're, um, plus they come from different types of organizations. So hopefully there'll be a lot of really good points of wisdom um, and even camaraderie, if you share our same challenge that one of our speakers does, um, that you'll be able to gain from this. Um, once again, would welcome anybody to, if you have questions throughout, um, in response to something somebody says or something that you want them to our speakers to address, please submit that in the Q&A section. Um, depending upon the questions and the flow of the conversation, we may get to one or some of those questions during our conversation, but we are reserving some Q&A time at the very end of our hour together. Um, plan on ending very promptly at two o'clock central time to respect everybody's time. Um, also, um, if you get invitations for a future, quarterly forums like this, feel free to share them with anyone you think might be interested in learning more about Catholic impact investing. So you do not have to be a member or a participant to um, attend these quarterly webinars. As I said, our goal is to help you learn more about the different topics and hopefully figure out how to apply that to your organization so you can move further into impact investing and creating a positive impact, not just by your philanthropic and work and good deeds, but also leveraging your investment portfolios. Um, with that, I wanna move on to our speakers and each one of them are gonna do a fine better job than I will in introducing them. So I'm gonna ask each of the speakers to take a couple minutes and just um, introduce your organization, the type of organization, um, what it does, um, your role at the organization, um, and then where your organization is as far as its journey on impact investing. Um, we purposely got um, organizations that are at different levels on that journey, doing more and some are just starting out. Um, but I think it's important that we hear from all of those. So this will sort of be a ground setting. So we um, know who is um, sharing their information with us. Um, and then from there, we'll move into a series of questions that we've designed to hopefully dig into impact investing in a way that's gonna be really helpful and actionable for everyone who's participating. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Brian Peeney to introduce himself. Brian? Sounds great. Uh, thanks, Stan, and thanks to Seek for the opportunity to share what uh, we're doing with uh, uh, Mercy Investment Services. I am the President and Chief Investment Officer for Mercy Investment Services. You can think of us as the family office for the Sisters of Mercy of the Americas, uh, women religious congregation uh, based in the U.S., but with also with uh, uh, sisters in Central South America, Philippines, uh, and Guam. And so from our perspective, um, we basically are the um, in-house and in family uh, investment provider for the sisters and 47 of their ministries that uh, wish to participate in the program. Uh, at this point, I, I would say as we've been uh, very uh, forward in this and, and as we'll talk about uh, our, our have put together a rather comprehensive uh, uh, socially responsible investment program. And we'll, we'll share more of that in a minute. Thank you, Brian. Um, Sister Sue, can we hand it over to you? Sure, thank you. I am Sister Sue Ernster and I am a member of the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. We are a women's religious congregation based in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And I currently serve as the vice president and the treasurer of our congregation. And we have a history of shareholder advocacy and socially responsible investing. We are taking this impact investing to a, a, a more amplified level and in a focused level over the last several years. And so we're just really beginning to amplify in a way of what building on what we have a, a strong history of. Great, thank you. Um, lastly, but not least, Jim. Thanks, Dan. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Jim Mahoney. I'm pleased to represent Bonds for Mercy Health. We're a large Catholic nonprofit health system. 
you know, our, our, we're, I'm located in Cincinnati, Ohio. As you can see here, I'm working out of my home, uh, but we represent um, you know, a health system that has uh, geographies in the Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, and Ireland. Uh, we have um, over 50 hospitals, and you know, our mission is really to extend the compassionate ministry of Jesus to increase the health and well-being of our communities and those that are underserved and, and don't have that access or who may be poor or dying. So, you know, impact investing has been something that we have, we may have not called it an impact investing at the time, but we've probably have been doing it for over 10 years. Um, uh, we're, I'd say we're definitely along the journey. Um, lots of road ahead, some road behind. So I'd say we're in the, sort of the developing phase of that impact investing journey. So um, I'm going to do another quick round of follow-ups, um, starting with you, Jim. Um, can you talk, you, you mentioned that you've been doing impact investing for about 10 years. Can you talk a little bit about you know, as what prompted Bon Secours interest in impact investing as opposed to negative screening or shareholder adv advocacy? Um, and then what do you um, hope to accomplish as you continue to move forward? Yeah, great question. Well, I guess I'd first off and say that impact investing is one of our, you know, several components of our SRI and ESG programs that we have. We are involved in all of the other you know, elements, social screening, uh, shareholder advocacy. We we focus on some other elements of our programs we could maybe talk about later today. When we first started impact investing, I think what, what drew us to it was the missional elements of it, the environmental. I, some of our first few impact investments were on the themes of water and environmental impact. Well, while we didn't call them impact at the time, I think that element plus that we thought there were great financial returns associated in those investments. We didn't think we were sacrificing financial returns for those particular cases where we did do that. And I think that's where we started to get ingrained in that in those types of investments, although it took time and evolution in the space and the industry for probably it was maybe a, could have been a decade later that we actually formalized impact investing by policy and and so there definitely is that journey where you have to sort of have those cases come up and then those cases lead to hey let's do that again or can we find other elements that are broad enough by nature to develop some program or initiative and then ultimately in, incorporate into our policies uh, and so that, that that is a journey that took um, that took years but i think also it was reflective of the time. Impact investing was uh, a phrase that wasn't used very commonly back then, if, if at all, and only amongst certain groups. And so I think, you know, today, I think, you know, people shouldn't be discouraged by that. There's uh, probably, hopefully, a faster on-ramp today to be involved in impact investing than there was, you know, maybe 10 years ago. Yeah, definitely more resources are available now. Um, Jim, you touched on something, um, and uh, I think it's important for our audience to understand what we mean by impact investing as far as returns. There's a lot of debate within investment um, institutions about whether impact investing can be done at market rate, risk-adjusted returns, or if they have to be concessionary, below market rate. And here at SEEK, we're agnostic about that. Um, we're not going to tell organizations the right way to do it and suggest that this other way is suboptimal. That's for participants to decide for themselves. And, and I've seen institutions certainly do both, you know, simultaneously. Um, so it's, I think that's an important distinction that we need to make. And sometimes when, you may, when we say impact investing, we really mean both kinds. So as we talk about this, let's keep that in mind. Um, Sister Sue, I'm going to ask you the same question that I did, Jim. Um, can you talk a little bit about your group's new journey and deciding to pursue impact investing and then you know, what you have been doing and what you hope to do? And we'll, we'll get into some more details, but this is just the starter you know, question. Sure. Thank you, Dan. And we really started probably in late 2018 after one of our community meetings and we were looking at how to shift a bit with some funds that we were receiving. And it was at that time that we started looking at what a Franciscan economy meant because we are Franciscans and how does a Franciscan economy look different than the economy that many of us are 
ensconced in here in the United States. And as we started to uncover that, it was about relationships, you know, the relationships. It was at that time that Pope Francis was calling forth the economy of Francesco. And we were looking at, well, how, does, how do we support the Pope's initiative for the economy of Francesco and really helping to build a solidarity economy. And it, it was really kind of a confluence of factors all coming together because then there were particip uh, opportunities to participate in different workshops where impact investing was discussed. And what was really attractive for us was the aspect of using our finances to continue our mission as our population in our congregation changes, we know that to move forward, we're, we've got an asset of finances and how do our finances really help to amplify our mission and have the greatest impact. And so we're looking at impact investing as a way to bridge the equity gap and help to unveil the white, our white privilege and how do we help using our privilege to bridge the equity gap so that there is greater equity for all. Mm -hmm. Also in line with Laudato Si and how that we are all connected and how one aspect of the world is impacted, impacts all of us. So if the economy is impacted or the environment, how do we help that? And so as we're embarking on the impact investing, we're really looking at is the, what's greater, the impact or the return? And if everything is equal, we'll go for the impact. We're not as, we, we are looking at, we'll take some concessionary or market-like returns if the impact is there. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, Brian, same question to you. Yes, um, the, the Sisters of Mercy have a very long history uh, with impact investing. Um, they recently uh, celebrated their 25th anniversary of a program they called Mercy Partnership Fund. And in essence, it was a concessionary impact uh, part of the portfolio uh, that was largely invested in those early days with uh, uh, CDFIs, uh, community development financial institutions, looking for a low uh, return, but high social impact in the areas of um, uh, low income housing, uh, job creation, microfinance, uh, things along that lines. And so, from our perspective, uh, the, the, the Mercies have been very active in that uh, uh, area for a long time, but largely in very small uh, dollars uh, historically. Uh, back in 2010, Mercy Investment Services was formed and we brought all of the assets of the sisters under one roof. Previously, they were being managed by uh, 20 some odd different congregations at, at the local level and, and aggregated those assets and, and proceeded to start increasing uh, the allocation there. Um, and really from the standpoint of, of the thought process being that when you really stopped and think of thought about it for the mercies, at least you know, investments is the largest asset on their balance sheet, you know, other than the sisters, which we don't put a, put a value on for the balance sheet, the, the greatest asset uh, from a financial resources uh, is investments. And you stop and think about it from a, a property perspective, you know, we look at every piece of property as to how does it support the mission of the organization, but we largely weren't doing that from an investment perspective. You know, you think about it from the standpoint that you have the 5% spend rate or whatever the spend rate of a particular organization is supporting the mission of the organization, but what's the other 95% doing on a, on a regular ongoing basis? And within that, um, you know, really 1% of it as it was the amount back in, in the day when we first started, that 1% of it was with uh, these CDFIs uh, aspect. And the thought process was, well, you know, yes, we have negative screening and yes, we're trying to do more in ESG and yes, we're uh, doing great work and shareholder engagement, but what can we specifically do to direct capital uh, to those that are most in need to try to achieve certain social or environmental returns? And so we've actually um, initiated a some, some very aggressive uh, plans to grow that impact part of the portfolio uh, really for that uh, specific purpose, which is, you know, let's 
try to view our investments similar to the way we view our properties or our other assets that if they're not supporting the mission of the organization, is there another way to do it? And so back in 2016, uh, we, we created uh, within our private equity program, uh, what we call the Environmental Solutions Fund. And so specifically assets that are meant to uh, be invested in things like renewable energy, energy and water efficiency, sustainable agriculture, sustainable forestry, et cetera. Um, and here just this year, uh, and we've grown very significant player for uh, with many of other people on this call, very significant player in uh, the environmental space uh, over the last five to six years. Um, we're just announced that we are, we've identified that model. And from our standpoint, are in the process of creating what we call the Inclusive Opportunities Fund. And really from our standpoint, it's, it's, a, it's a sister's desire uh, to direct uh, you know, market rate capital to women, people of color, other disenfranchised groups who've been shut out of the traditional capital markets. And so we, we kind of view that as uh, from an impact perspective that the, the the best way to direct it is through the concessionary side, uh, through things like CDFIs, increasingly through some GP sort of uh, structures. And now um, uh, within the private equity side and, and being very specific about uh, uh, those issues that we're trying to address. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, we've touched on this a little bit, but I wanna move in more specifically to talking about um, leadership and governance. Um, and uh, it's one thing for our listeners and others to be interested in impact investing, but within, that, in, in, within an institution, how do you actually get that implemented? Um, was it you know, someone just being assigned by leadership to figure it out and run with it? Was it more of a bottom up, someone down here? You all have different leadership and governance structures at your three respective organizations. So I, th I think hearing about how each one of your organizations, leaderships, and related governance documents have addressed impact investing and what had to change in order to pursue or pursue at a higher scale impact investing. Um, Jim, can I ask you to go first? Sure, I, I think the answer is a little bit of both. Uh, I think we're, we're fortunate to be part of an organization that just given its heritage, there's, there's a strong desire from the top down to have there be strong alignment with the mission across elements of the organization. And, and then they look to you know, senior management and areas like, like treasury to help inform that decision and what that looks like and how is that actually done. Uh, but for example, our SRI policy is something that goes all the way up to our board of directors. It's not a, you know, a policy of just a committee. It's something our board has eyes on uh, every year. Um, and then we've also uh, worked with our pension and investment committee that has that sort of that accountability to, you know, help us in kind of make, shaping that SRI policy over time, um, you know, making us better, asking good questions. And then we also have developed another level, um, a layer down called our SRI work group that really is uh, anyone that has SRI programs know or ESG programs knows that there's a lot of work and rolling up the sleeves that's involved to do this. And we, that's the, the group within our ministry. We're really try to bring in other groups, other leaders, um, whether that be people in uh, advocacy, government relations, people in community health, you know, Mark, uh, Brian mentioned uh, CDFIs and community investing. We, you know, we engage quite a bit with the community health team members at Bon Score Mercy Health on, on how can we drive, because you have to be partnered across the organization to be able to do a lot of that work. Uh, and so those have been some of the tools that we've used as we've really tried to kind of really mesh the top down and the bottom up together to have something that that, that works. And and I would just say to the, those in the call that are kind of earlier in their journey, um, I think it, it's, it is it should naturally be a little bit of a slower process. Um, I think one thing we, we didn't want to do was to jump out too quickly and, and you know make mistakes. I think it was something where uh, all the, the the five components of our program that we're involved in advocacy, direct community investments, social screening, ESG, um, and then impact, all those elements um, evolved over time. They didn't all just pop up at once. And so it's, it has been a slow evolution. Uh, but I think to, to, to Brian's point earlier, um, I think Catholic 
Um, healthcare has always done a really good job and just Catholic investors have always done a really good job focusing on things like not doing harm, the prophetic voice, advocacy. But I think going forward, you know, you're seeing Laudato C focus on things like, you know, more of and just a focus on kind of impact investments is starting to come about and sort of that um, uh, and some of what Pope Francis is calling for. So we think um, both of them are should be part of that identity going forward. And and so that's where we're focused. Um, so lots of similarities to what, what Brian is focused on there in terms of how can we scalably uh, not just do things that are high impact, but how can we do the things that we can do the most efficiently and scale the most. And impact is one of those things that impact investing is one of those things that ranks, ranks the highest for us uh, in, in, that, in, that, in that endeavor. Excellent. Brian, you're also at a rather large institutional investor. Um, and as you mentioned, you've been doing impact investing for quite a while. So can you talk about you know, what, what the leadership and governance of you know, impact investing is at Mercy and what, how that's evolved over time since you've been doing it for so long? I would, I would definitely say that um... As Jim had mentioned, you know, incrementalism is is the key to this. When you're starting out, particularly, is it, it's very easy to look at others who've been doing this for longer periods of time and almost get frozen like deer's in headlights uh, from that standpoint. And as we say, you know, everyone has different gifts, and some folks' gifts might be in shareholder engagement. Some folks' my gifts might be more on the investing side. Figure out where those gifts are and really. Uh, concentrate your efforts on that and, and do that well. And then before you know it, you'll be sitting there and saying is, okay, well, we did that, what's next? And um, I have no doubt that the types of folks that are on this call, um, the uh, sponsors of those organizations um, will, will always strive to say, what else can we do? What else can we do? Whether it be men and women religious, whether it be other organizations, um, you know, these organizations came about from a culture of always trying to say, what can we do and what can we do better to help those most in need? And so from that standpoint, you, you, we have the benefit of buy-in from the top down. Um, the key then becomes from my perspective as making sure you have the right people around the table. And, and that really uh, becomes the, the core competency in that regards, so whether it be uh, staff, whether that be investment consultants and having the right investment consultants that are actually open to these kind of conversations. Um, you know, and increasingly from our standpoint, because, um, you know, particularly from a women uh, and men religious perspective, the numbers are decreasing. And so increasingly you're re relying more and more on lay folks uh, to, to join and help uh, serving on committees, serving on boards. And one of the things that we've really found is, is it's, it's key part of that gets into what we call the, the mission formation aspect of, of working and getting uh, wonderful lay volunteers with an expertise on finance up to speed regarding the mission of the Sisters of Mercy, the background, the culture. Um, well, early on, we ran into issues that, that folks came to serve on committees and to a certain extent, they came with a way of kind of trying to protect the sisters from themselves from an investment perspective until they really got a sense of the history of the sisters, which is, listen, you know, the history of these men and women religious is, you know, you get, you get a letter from a bishop in another city, you jump on a train, and next thing you know, you're in another place with a couple bucks in your pocket, no idea what's going on. And it's that aspect of of the culture, uh, the dedication, the we see a problem and we go address it aspect, that you really have to make sure you spend time getting that understanding, that culture, that identity into the heads of those lay volunteers that are coming to help. Because otherwise, you know, it will be treated more like a, a Wall Street, a money manager aspect that says, listen, yes, we need to be prudent. Yes, we need to understand the risks. But we always have to be asking ourselves is, you know, can we accept that risk based on what we are going to accomplish? Great, thank you. Um, Sister Sue, um, obviously not a big institutional investor. <laughs> um, so very interested in um, 
what your experience has been or your observations have been um, as far as how impact investing got started and how it's grown from a governance and leadership perspective. Well, thank you. Uh, we are, I'd say, in our really early stages and are figuring out our governance. When we've been doing our shareholder advocacy and the SRI screenings, we've got an investment review committee that looks at that and, you know, working with our publicly traded manager, portfolio managers. This has been more of a private equity and we haven't engaged our publicly traded managers as of yet. So there is a small committee that has been looking at the investments and right now there's another person and I, and he is a retired financial advisor who are looking vetting the potential opportunities. And then we bring these to the committee for a recommendation. And then that committee makes the recommendation to our leadership team who makes the final decision of whether it's a go or not. And as we are looking at this, it is, and the mainly the committee right now is all members of our religious congregation, except for the one advisor. We're looking at into the future of uh, bringing in lay consultants to help us really put, pull together our finances and come up with some procedures across the board who also understand mission so that it isn't only us sisters worried about mission as Brian talked about. We can't be the only ones that are concerned about our mission because when we, are, when we don't have the capacity in the same way we do now, what happens then? So we're trying to plan for that and bring together some lay advisors and form a committee that would look at that, maybe including uh, you know, outside advisors, others in the community. We're still trying to get that formed so that mm -hmm. impact investing isn't seen as separate from our publicly traded portfolio but that there's a broad umbrella. We also have found, even in these early stages of impact invest, what we're calling impact investing and in utilizing the Catholic social teaching principles, we haven't found a lot of opportunities in the publicly traded arena. And some of our managers or our broker are, oh, they understand ESG and, you know, screenings, but to look through the lens or even vet a company with Catholic social teaching principles is something we're going to go to with our next level because that does help us stay grounded in our, our, our who we are as Catholics and in my mind really allows others to understand where we're coming from and why we're choosing to make this investment or not make this investment. Excellent, thank you. Um, real briefly for our audience, I'd like to remind anybody who has a question that they'd like us to cover um, before the end of the hour, uh, please submit that in the Q&A section um, at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, real quick pop up, popcorn question for any or all of you. Um, how, if at all, has impact investing been addressed in your investment policy? I can start because we haven't addressed it yet. And we know that that is on our list of things to do as we grow in this endeavor. It's not even endeavor. As we grow in impact investing, we need to incorporate it into our investment policy. Mm -hmm. For uh, Mercy Investment Services, uh, we look at this very much from an asset allocation standpoint. And so uh, our concessionary impact investing piece is, is a dedicated asset allocation uh, within the portfolio. And so as we're running the expected returns and, and uh, looking at the risk of the portfolio, uh, we are always looking at that number saying is how can we increase it? How can we increase it? Uh, you know, as I mentioned, we kind of inherited a little bit less than 1% of the portfolio. Uh, our goal now is, as we're working towards 3% within that part of the portfolio. 
when interest rates were low, we realized it didn't really hurt that much. However, as interest rates are rising, it's going to be a little bit more of a drag on the portfolio. And as a result, can we make that up in other parts of the portfolio from the, the, the return aspect? Um, within the uh, private side, we actually state a specific percentage. So we now are, are, shoot, are aiming to have more than 50% of our private equity portfolio involved in the Environmental Solutions Fund um, uh, from an environmental aspect. And uh, uh, again, we just approved this uh, Inclusive Opportunities Fund. We haven't put a percentage on it yet, but that is something that will make its way into the asset allocation as we move forward as well. For Bond School Mercy Health, we've had impact investments as part of our policy for a number of years. Um, but we continue to sort of wrestle with how can we continue to, you know, one of our big um, attributes in our mission statement is stewardship. And we need to challenge ourselves with how can we make a commitment here, or at least a first commitment on this even longer term journey on impact. So we did establish an actual commitment of our long term pool to be allocated to impact investments and just did that last December. So we now have a just under 3% target to long term target to impact investments and with the goal being to, um, you know, continue this, like I said, continue that journey and, and, and you know, maybe at some point we'll talk about should it be more than that, but that's the commitment we've made today to, to kind of go to the next step. No, great. Thank you. Um, there's an interesting question in the chat section that I want to pose to all of you, um, but I'm going to modify it just a little bit. How do you think about specific themes or sectors when deciding where to focus impact investing? Um, I imagine some of it is dealing with the charism of your institutions and the mission, um, but also are there certain types of impact investments, you know, that um, will certain certain issues that are, um, it's possible to create more of an impact or more of an obvious impact versus other issues where it might be a little bit more qualitative, a little bit more ambiguous. Um, how do you think about that? And also finally, are there different structures of impact investments that you think work better on certain areas or certain themes than others? I know there's a lot there. <laughs> I would definitely pick up and start us off maybe with uh, building upon your charism uh, comment, because you know, from, from our perspective, as you're sitting here looking at it, it's very easy to get lost with the, there's so much we could work on, there's so many needs, where do we start? And so to really be able to sit down with uh, those whose assets that it, it, they, they are, um, whether they be sisters, whether they be other congregations, the health system, and trying to say is how, how do we connect to those groups and what do they view as the most important? And so from our perspective, um, you know, the early days with um, uh, the concessionary side on our standpoint was a lot of uh, items related to the poor, uh, those the most in need, very consistent with the type of uh, individuals that we that we serve as the Sisters of Mercy. And so you're looking at low-income housing, you're looking at job creation, you're looking at microfinance in third world countries, you're looking at bringing clean water and sanitation to those that don't have, have as such. Um, when we got to the, the market rate side and, and we said, okay, in 2016, uh, the sister said, you know, you're building a private equity portfolio, but can you specifically dedicate a portion to impact? And again, you're immediately thinking, well, there's healthcare, there's education, there's environment. Ladies, where would you like us to go? And at that point in time, um, you know, it was a very overwhelming feeling to address environmental issues. Um, at the same time, they were looking at it across the entire portfolio and, and um, within the concessionary side, we had some uh, environmental aspects, but uh, it, it was a lesser portion of the portfolio versus things like uh, uh, low-income housing and job creation and things and such. So as a result, uh, really um, put our initial emphasis on the market rate side on the environmental space. Um, the other aspect is, is that when you're, you're really working at things at a market rate perspective, it's, it's trying to figure out where are those uh, opportunity sets. Um, as I like to say, you, you're, you're looking for that intersection of making money and doing the right thing. And um, you know, sometimes they just don't, aren't available and, and to try to force things. Uh, so to, to really try to understand your opportunity set. 
Uh, for those, you know, if you're looking to to get into this space right now, I, you know, have been yelling at the top of the mountain uh, that you know, environment is that space. Uh, if you're looking for that opportunity set, there is such the capital needs uh, going forward. If we have any chance at all at one and a half degrees, um, and to limit global warming, um, change what's going on uh, and what we're doing to the to the world. There's going to be so much capital that needs to go into this. Um, you can get a market rate return. You can be compensated for your illiquidity uh, that you're taking by entering into these private equities. And at the same time, uh, some fascinating, exciting uh, items that we, we've inv been involved in with, with the sisters that any organization would be very proud of to, to be part of. Great, thank you. Um, Jim, I saw your head nodding a little bit when Brian was talking about environmental issues. Um, care to elaborate, and then if you want to touch on any of the other aspects of questions I asked. Yep, L lots there, um, but I, I would just say um, yeah, the environmental, I guess, first off, we've kind of, I guess, warehoused impact investments in various parts of the portfolio from whether that's below rate, market rate impact investments to public investments to private investments we found that the market rate impact investments tend to fit more uh, we just find there's more flexibility on the impact themes we can go after in the private's portfolio uh, and as it relates to um, kind of I saw a question in the chat about you know geographies I would just say um, environment is a big piece of what we do but just given we're a health system and I think this comes back to everybody has to find that you can't do everything. What's that piece of impact that most aligns with your mission? I'd say the S part of impact seems to align a little bit more with ours. The social determinants of health are some of those impact sectors that we tend to like to focus on. And uh, so th those would include things like financial inclusion, affordable housing, education, uh, you know, water and resources. So th those would be some of the things that I'd, I'd say that we have, those are the, some of the, the verticals that we've gone after and impact investing. Um, and then, then the environmental aspect has been one where we're currently getting more and more up to speed on this sort of this energy transition. But there, as Brian mentioned, there is a lot to do there. You can all on the, the themes of energy transition funds, batteries, all the way to you know renewable energy and solar and, and wind. So I think people have to find their comfort level of how much quote innovation risks they wanna take as they go down that spectrum. And we're currently settling into that spot right now where I think we're being cautious as we move out there um, and finding things to do that are at least a little bit more comfortable comfortable for us to do from a due diligence point of view on the front end. And I saw a question in the chat about just geographies. And I, I'd say um, the below market rate impact investments, the CDFIs, the direct community investments, that's where we've really been able to be even more laser focused on uh, markets where we have hospitals, um, markets where we have a big presence, how can we drive impact specifically in those geographies where on the impact investing front, it feels a little bit more, um, if you're going into funds, it feels like your impact is still powerful, but just a little bit more spread out geographically. Good, thank you. Sister Sue. Thank you. Uh, our areas are related to our charism and Franciscans are, you know, the whole connectedness. It's not, I mean, what's our relationship with all of creation? So if one area is impacted, then all is impacted. So it's the environment. And in 2018, as part of our assembly mandates, we came, we embraced three main areas, which are all inclusive and overlap. And the first one is uh, bridging the equity gap. So unveiling our white privilege. So some of our investments that we have made over the last year or so have had that lens of how does this help bridge the equity gap so that those who have been disempowered or barred from avenues for income have access. The, another one is to building bridges of relationship to stretch us to be people of encounter who stand with all suffering in our earth community. So that is the environment. Also, why are people needing to migrate from their home country? It could be political reasons. 
is a deforestation. So how do we help people not have to leave their home country if we can? And then our third one is freed through joyful gospel living to be transformed in love and goodness for community and mission. So we're really looking at the whole at pa package, I would say, through that lens. And it is, you know, the environmental and how to find the best ones that are going to have the biggest, the, the impact we would desire. Mm -hmm. And it's, we can't do everything for everyone. So to kind of hone in on what, where we can and trust that others are going to fill the gaps that we are able to fill. So um, we're getting close to time for us to wrap up. So um, there's a, one or two more questions that I wanted to try to sneak in um, quickly because I feel like they're very important. Um, one, it's a little bit of a two-parter and I think they're related. Um, how, how have you sourced opportunities? Um, and that includes, do you work with external advisors or consultants or do you, um, are there other organizations that you know, you're involved with um, to identify opportunities? Um, and related to that, um, I think it's really important. How do you measure impact? Because you can source an opportunity, but as far as impact goes, you need to evaluate whether the expected impact actually happened. So how do you measure that? Um, and then related to that as well, are there any resources dealing with impact investing that either of you have um, particularly useful that you'd like to recommend to our audience? I'll jump in with a uh, shameless plug for Seek here. Um, one of the things that I think is, is probably best is to find groups of people like yourself to just talk to. Um, it will help you get moving. Um, and so from our standpoint, to be able to talk with folks at Seek, to be able to throw questions out that says, hey, I'm looking for a you know, anybody's seen any good deals on water? Well, you know, we'd really like to do something in the water space. Um, to as simple as, um, you know, I, I'm just new and starting, how do I get going? Um, so I would definitely uh, recommend that, you know, the more you can work with other like-minded investors, uh, we are all capacity constrained, resource constrained in terms of, of staffing as we're putting this together. So the more you can share, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, as we go forth this. So I would definitely say, uh, share that. Uh, at the same time, we are uh, an organization that does use outside consultants, um, uh, independent third-party consultants. Um, you know, from our perspective, I would say is if a consultant you're working with uh, says uh, it can't be done or is steering you away from it, it's time to look for a new consultant. Um, that might've been the, the, the answer 10 years ago, but uh, in this day and age, uh, with as much attention that's being placed to whether it be ESG or, or impact or, or screening or shareholder engagement, there is absolutely no reason anybody should be saying to anybody on these calls that um, you're going to forego income. Uh, you can, if you wish. You know, if, if we wish to get involved in concessionary impact investing, we re recognize that there is a income that we are foregoing for a high social or environmental impact. But the general old school way that consultants would try to brush off organizations like those on this call to basically say it can't be done. Um, it can't be done maybe by them because they, they don't have the resources and knowledge base to do it, but it, it's time to look for another partner. Good, thank you. Sister Sue? Well, I'm going to piggyback on Brian, and one of the resources has been SEEK, because as we started on this, we were part of the Livable Futures Workshop, which is with the Francesco Collaborative, and there was quite a bit of introduction and relationship with SEEK. So we've utilized the network from SEEK and the Francesco Collaborative to do diligence together, and what has been really helpful for someone newer coming into the space has been the willingness of those involved to share the information they have and their perspective on the different potential investment opportunities and like, oh, did you think about this? Or we're in this process, what do you think about that? And it's just been a great, it's been a gift. It has been a huge gift to have other like-minded 
investors sharing the knowledge they have rather than it being considered proprietary and not sharing what they know. We are not using, uh, well, we have a retired uh, financial ad uh, advisor who's working with us, but we don't have a consultant per se. And since we're at the beginning of making our investments, we haven't been able to, with these, we haven't been able to see and really grade the impact because some of them are first time funds. So they're just getting started. Yep. So uh, there's those. And then, you know, I'll leave it at that for now. All right, thank you. Um, finally, Jim, do you have anything to add about your experiences? Not much to add here. Uh, I, I think, you know, we've done lots of networking and peer referencing from anywhere and everywhere. Obviously, those types of organizations that have been, you know, that are most like us make the most sense for us to talk to. But we've, we've, we've talked to inside the Catholic community, even outside the Catholic community. I think there's lots of great, I do think I will say there are lots of great organizations doing impact that are not part of the Catholic community. And um, we should see what they have to say. And, um, but I, I can say like, non shamelessly here that, so, so far, the best conversations we've had have been, have been with organizations that also, quote, happen to be SEEK members. So there's my backdoor shameless plug uh, <laughs> for SEEK. But um, I do think consultants have finally gotten the memo on impact and that they know that they have to provide that for clients. I think they're starting to get it on DEI. It's going to take some time. But one challenge we've encountered with just this impact investing journey is you're going to encounter strategies. There are going to be emerging firms with emerging track records, and that's where the resources come in. And you've got to find a way there to have that resourced or have to, like Brian mentioned, or Sister Sue mentioned, a good network. Uh, I think you can leverage the consultant as well. And that's been something that, that we've done that's, that's started to help. But I think you do have to have that willingness to be open to some of those types of strategies. I think the last one for us, I'll toss out just a new one, is investment managers. So, for example, we have a co-investment program. I not, know not all people can do this, but there's – so on one side of the spectrum, you could do a fund of funds to give you impact investing if you find that you um, – you don't have the, the resources to do it internally, but we, we've actually gone the other way. We found that some of our most interesting impact investments have actually been co-investment ideas from a general partner we work with, where we get to have like the purest, most aligned idea they have on impact and, and co-invest in that and make that an impact investment. So we have our fund investments and our, and our co-investments sort of working for us. Got it. Good. Thank you. Um, then, yes. No, I, not, not to... Uh, Ignore that last part of your question, maybe just real quick on impact measurement. Um, yeah, I would just say is impact measurement's hard. Um, it is time consuming. The problem really becomes is we, you know, the industry in itself has not come up with standardized reporting. And so a lot of it is surveying is conversations or just accepting whatever the manager is giving you. And so um, impact measurement is something that I think we all should seek to do, uh, but I think my, my advice would be for a group who is doing impact measurement is, is keep it simple. Don't try to bite off too much. Um, there's a lot of things changing in the industry right now and, and whether it be SASB and other groups that are trying to come up with standardized reporting that will be helpful. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, for those groups that are out there doing it, we'll know that it, it's a lot of work and a lot of resources that you can't really buy from an outside vendor. You kind of have to do it yourself. Great. Thank you, Brian. I think those are some good words for us to wrap up the conversation with. I'd like to uh, once again thank the three of you for taking the time today to uh, share with everybody um, your perspectives, your experiences. Um, I think it's been really, really helpful. Um, our question and answer and chat boards have just lit up with questions. Um, I think this is a new record. So we're really striking a chord as far as people needing more information and wanting help and wanting to hear more. Um, for those questions we didn't have time to answer during our discussion, there will be a learning report developed and posted at the SEEK website next week, which will an provide answers to all of those questions. Um, and Maggie or Ann, will that also be emailed to all the participants today? I'm see I, Ann said yes. So great. So you should all get a copy of that as well. Um, I also want to just you know, 
quickly thank Brian and Jim for the little plugs about Seek. Um, I believe in Seek because I think it's a great networking and learning space where Catholic investors that are interested in impact investing can come and learn from one another. So you can learn from more experienced people either further along in the journey. You can learn from institutions that have been focusing on a particular issue for many years. And that's an issue you wanna start focusing on. Um, it's also a good way to identify some impact investment opportunities. We have a, a business platform an investment platform where our members can actually post investments that they've made before um, so others be, can become aware of it and can also invest if they, if they feel so inclined. Um, so you know, there's a lot of resources there and I really encourage all of you guys to, if you are not um, members yet, um, consider becoming a member, but at least participate in the various SEEK activities. Um, it's a great learning opportunity. Um, finally, um, like as I said at the beginning, we try to do these calls every three months. So we will be sending out an invitation um, probably in six weeks or so um, for our next quarterly call. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, and also, um, and you can also email either Maggie or Ann with any topic suggestions you may have something particular you wanna learn about. As we demonstrated from today, we can talk about the process and the operations of making investments. But as I mentioned too, we can also focus on specific issues like gender diversity or affordable housing or refugees, all topics we've covered in the past. So thank you all for coming. I'm gonna hand it back over to Ian right now to close us out. Thank you, Dan, for facilitating today. And a special thank you also to Rick Sison and Jessica Cook, who uh, you guys didn't see, but it, they're co-chairs of the SEEKS Participation and Outreach Committee, who helped plan this webinar, along with Maggie Stoller, who makes everything happen. And we're very grateful, of course, again, to each of our speakers, Brian, Sister Sue, and Jim, for sharing their thoughts, experiences, and truly valuable insights about their in different impact investing journeys. I think you guys stole my thunder. I mean, you told, said everything I was going to say, say already. So, I, but I just want to share very quick uh, something here. A couple of, um, let's see here. Oops, my apologies. I had it ready. So, I mean, as we, you had a, a a sense already had a taste today of what SEEK is, what our community is doing. And without repeating things that I already said, I just really want to say we are really, the vision is to foster a world where capital is transformative force for good, you know, stewards the environment and enhances both equality and human dignity. Um, we want to spread the word, the word about impact investing. In if you already looking at it or an impact investor already aligning assets with your unique mission or your organization is just interested in starting a path of CST Catholic social teaching guided investments get in touch with us I'd love you know we would love to share our details about the membership program or even of our Catholic impact investing pledge uh, it, it's a very diverse membership we wanted to grow so that the community that uh, has always more access to impact deals, to experiences, and it's richer for everyone. Um, so we hope to hear from you. Uh, one last thing before we wrap up, if you have, uh, because I'm jumping things that were already said, we just want to thank you again for joining. If you have two minutes now uh, and would like to share your feedback about this and future SEEK events, please click on the feedback form that Maggie just shared in the chat box. We appreciate your thoughts on this webinar and welcome new ideas for future ones. Thank you again to everyone. Have a great weekend.